Hello, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Um, it reminds me of COVID time and introduction that we used to during the COVID Zoom uh, session. Uh, it is great to reconnect. Um, I guess everybody is back preparing for the start or starting academic and diplomatic year. Somehow it starts in September. Uh, students are back in the classrooms uh, in most of the countries uh, globally. Diplomats are back in the negotiating room. A lot of dynamism. Um, unfortunately, the problems that we had before the summer didn't disappear during the summer. The world, in some cases, is uh, deteriorating. But there is a need for more reflections and more discussions. Uh, one of the issues uh, which we have been covering in depth is artificial intelligence, as you know. And uh, we have been uh, using the summer break for quite a few breakthroughs. You will be learning more about them during the month of September. But it was also a point uh, where we stepped back and tried to see AI dynamism into the broader context. Diplo has been in AI for more or less um, and myself three decades, and uh, it is right to time to see what are the real developments, what are the real challenges, and how new are some dilemmas that we are facing currently. This was the context for the recycling ideas series, and I will reflect shortly about that. And it is also the purpose of today's webinar to make a bridge between these historical reflections and what is ahead of us in the coming months to map the main developments. Obviously, history can inspire us. It can sometimes provide some useful lessons, but we have to uh, approach these new dilemmas about artificial intelligence with fresh eyes and fresh approach. This is the context for, for, for our discussion, and I will uh, share the screen now with you. Uh, and uh, let me share. Okay. Those of maybe follow the series of the webinars on recyc recycling ideas every uh, second day. I've been posting the uh, short blog texts on the different phases from the uh, prehistory till the modern time, Vienna, Nexus, and Nespri Tech de Genève, asking the questions, what we can learn from those thinkers, from Socrates, Plato, or Confucius and the things, what we can learn about our era. And that's basically uh, what the whole series was about. You can still consult it and you can uh, see some useful insights. For example, what can we learn from Socrates about AI and prompting? One of the key techniques of artificial intelligence, how to write the prompts. This is the context, bridge between that discussion and what is ahead of us. Uh, let me just quickly reflect on this historical journey. We started with what the German philosopher Karl Jasper called axial period. Axial period was the time when the main ideas of our society were set uh, in a way, a basis of operating system, we can call it, call it Linux or whatever, of humanity was set. Uh, it was with uh, in Asia with uh, Confucius, uh, with ob obviously Buddha in India, Taoism, Taoism um, um, in Judeo-Christian uh, Christianity, ancient Greek philosophers, uh, Ubuntu philosophy in Africa, and more or less that basic the contours of the philosophical religious things were set in that period. 800 BC to Anno Domino, with Islam coming at just add on a few centuries later. In this evolution, this basic operating system of society, answering the questions who we are, how we deal with the predicament, what is human dignity, how to protect human life, what does it mean fulfillment and happiness, that system got a bit of additional layer during the Enlightenment period. Rousseau, Voltaire, Diderot, and other thinkers uh, who basically put the rationality and the human in the center, human agency, logic and rationality as a way of dealing with problems of society. 
Then further on, you have Vienna thinkers, five Vienna thinkers, Freud, Schumpeter, Hayek, von Mise, uh, who uh, put the latest layer on operating system of society. If you look at the current systems in place, let's say in the United States, in Europe, you can see that the idea of creative destruction, which was used later by uh, Facebook and Silicon Valley, was set by Schumpeter. Freud set up the questions of the um, um, whole movement of uh, psychoanalysis and getting deeper in human motivation, which is used by social media. Wittgenstein was one of the forefathers of the artificial intelligence with uh, his theory of probability and linguistics. And we come to digital axial period, our era. In addition to Vienna thinkers, and across the time, you have what we call Esprit Tech de Genève, and also influence of Geneva thinkers on the AI era. But this is the context. This pyramid provides the context of the development. Therefore, when we discuss what is a human agency, what is consciousness in AI, can AI replace free will? Very often, you can get back to Socrates, Plato, Confucius, Ubuntu thinking, very important tradition, African tradition of dealing with the human predicaments, or later on Enlightenment thinkers, Geneva thinkers, and, and the other actors. Uh, we are connecting from Geneva, where we argue that technology needs humanity, at least during the last two centuries, and something which can be described as Esprit Tech de Genève, as a way of negotiating between what's going on on this image in Bay Area, in San Francisco, and how it impacts society in human rights, humanitarian, and other, and other areas. And I'm always quoting Charles Bonnet, botanist who just worked across the street where I'm connecting uh, from in, in Botanical Garden in Geneva, and who said 300 years ago, machines could be made to imitate human intelligence. Therefore, people have been thinking about us, technology, our drive to innovate. You obviously can recall Mary Shelley and Frankenstein and other thinkers who lived around the Geneva Lake and were reflecting on, on technology and uh, society. Now, I will try to make this bridge towards the current time around by answering the few inquiry questions. Why this history matters for dealing with AI challenges? What are the issues and developments? Who are actors and stakeholders? Where are the places and spaces where AI and society is negotiating? How to deal with uh, AI challenges, AI and governance, and what is when, what is time and timing? This is the plan for, uh, for today. As always, we appreciate highly interactive sessions. Pose your questions, and my colleagues will, will interrupt me and uh, we will we will uh, um, answer your questions, comments, uh, and um, and uh, please send the critical comments and questions. The time is very critical and decisive. There is no one truth. What I'm going to say is just my view about these developments, and it would be great to hear different perspectives, especially from different cultural contexts, which is which is missing in the today's AI debate. Okay, why? This discussion matters, this bridge between past and the future. There are a few reasons. One is to deal with the, uh, I don't know how to frame it, but we can call it uh, uh, some sort of hysteria. This is a cover page of the time, sending the AI is the end of humanity. Uh, there is a lot of uh, wrong media coverage which is framing AI in the very binary approach, killing humanity or saving humanity, and there is no serious discussion. Serious discussion, which is anchored in the history, in history of human thinking. And this is the role that in particular places like Geneva can play in making solid, balanced, inclusive discussion and avoid as much as it is possible this type of coverage. As you know, there are conventions, petitions signed by 
scientists arguing that AI will kill humanity, that this is worse than nuclear uh, weapons and uh, pandemics and climate change with very little justification. And I would be very, very careful and worried about it. It doesn't mean that there are no serious risks, but discussing of the risk requires real responsibility that we know what we are uh, talking about. What is why it matters? It matters because we have to, uh, somebody has to answer our calls. Students are starting academic year. Yesterday I met a friend of mine who is teacher and he said, we don't know what to do with ChatGPT writing student thesis. There's a separate question that we can discuss and many schools are considering banning of church GPT, which is very bad decision. And I can justify why it is bad decision. But there is nobody to answer our questions. AI is around us. You have either this type of answers, which do not have, doesn't help us. But there are people are losing jobs. Students are using chat GPT for uh, writing thesis. And society is not getting a good answers to these questions. This is missing. And this is a huge responsibility for the UN, for the diplomats in general, to make this uh, exchange point somehow functional. It's time for reflections. This is how I use this summer. Uh, to step back and to see what is really new and how different are dilemmas from those that were faced by people a few centuries or millennia ago. It is time where we have to negotiate social contract. This term is used in the, by the UN Secretary General. Social contract will be negotiated in different communities, from the local communities, especially in Switzerland, which has a good and big tradition of decentralization to the country level, to the global, global uh, regional and global scene. It won't be contract signed on dotted lines, most likely. It will be our understanding of what we expect from AI and how we can use AI. It is also a question of the future of humanity. Are we holding it together with, with machines or pulling away? It depends how you interpret this image. What are the issues and developments that we'll be discussing and, uh, and uh, considering? Uh, first is a meaning. There is huge terminological confusion. What is AI? What is generative AI? What is machine learning? Early phases of the hype, and it happened in the past with the internet, with the social media, with blockchain, is that uh, you use new terminology and uh, present yourself as a pioneer by using new terms. Therefore, that's that's current phase of AI and the huge confusion around terminology. Therefore, always ask, what is the meaning between behind AI diplomacy, cyber, online, and other issues? One big issue and big question uh, could be explained by this tale of uh, eight blind men and the elephant. It's a famous uh, Hindu tale. And this is how we understand in the artificial intelligence today. It's about privacy for some, automation. It's about job losses for others. It's about algorithm, databases, saving money for businessmen. It's about driverless car. It's about cloud. It's about machine learning. And this is a big challenge. How to make sure that at least there is somebody with a sight and seeing the whole elephant, not just specific parts and the, and the aspects. Here is a definition of what is AI related to. Refers, AI refers to a set of technologies that influence, assist, or replace traditional human decisions and activities. It is umbrella concept AI that includes machine learning, neural networks, speech processing, robotics, among others. Probably not particularly helpful, but I usually start with this definition if people ask me what AI is. When I have to explain AI, I explain to diplomats with the flags. When you walk in front of the UN, you have 193 flags. And uh, if you put them together, you will see the patterns. AI is about patterns. Uh, Pan-Arab flags uh, have certain 
combination black, white, green, red, African, uh, Slavic, uh, Scandinavian, uh, um, Latin American, and others. And this is a good ex example how to explain AI. AI is about discovering patterns in the lot of data. What is AI governance? As you can see, it moved from digital cyber internet governance in AI governance. Question of infrastructure, security, legal issue, development, economic, human rights, and socioculture. More than 50 different issues related to artificial intelligence. Let me just highlight some of them, which I'm sure you are familiar of. Future work with the International Labour Organization. Little autonomous weapons with the, uh, the, uh, the government's uh, uh, expert working group of, on autonomous weapons. Intellectual property, big issue. Does OpenAI have a right on our data in producing chat GPT and other things? Question of protection of data. Monopolies. Some of these fears, AI is anti portas, AI will kill us, is motivated by existing monopolies to stop development and say, okay, there is very risky, it's very risky to develop new AI. Let's stop on this level and keep our monopolies. You will know to what companies I'm referring. Question of e-commerce, how AI will influence uh, e-commerce, competition policy, fintech, cybersecurity, huge issue about misuse of AI, question of digital identity. Just a few issues from this building uh, that uh, that you saw in the previous image. What is one of the cr critical issues is about data governance because data is a fuel of artificial intelligence. How we govern data in terms of technology, economy, security, law, and human rights. Just a few, few, few issues. It's a question of fake news or real news. Now, what is the real news when it can be generated easily by AI? Fakeness is much easier to create from videos to texts, photos with advanced artificial intelligence. It's a question of development. Can AI help us to realize sustainable development goals and agenda 2030? Maybe. But I'm arguing even more that we should use SDGs as a guardrails for AI, not only to use AI to implement uh, SDGs, but SDGs are codification of the core special development values of humanity. Let us use them to uh, help the AI developers that when they develop a new algorithm, they will consider if it is going to increase the gender inequality, youth participation, climate protection, and other SDGs. Somehow it is completely missed in the current UN discussion, but this is area of enormous potentials, both for AI to be governed with the collection of the core values of humanity, but also for SDGs to get additional adrenaline. Those of you who are involved in UN negotiation knows that there is a bit of uh, SDG fatigue, unfortunately. Let me just go quickly to, to chat and see the questions that uh, were asked and comments. Uh, Paula Barosh, Ubuntu, Ubuntu Filove was developed as a methodology for training young people in Portugal and it's widespread throughout the world. Great to hear, Paula. Uh, Ubuntu is very interesting approach and it's great that uh, somebody in Portugal realized potential of it. Uh, you know, the famous saying, uh, I am because you are. It's importance of the community for development AI. And most of knowledge, which we sometimes underestimate, is developed in interaction, is developed in communities. And we sometimes overestimate uh, our importance as thinkers, writers, creators. We rely a lot on the others in scientific communities, in Ubuntu communities, and we can learn a lot from African tradition, Ubuntu and other other tradition. Pareja Sarvar question, uh, drawing from historical examples of transformation technology, such as the industrial revolution or the advent of nuclear power, what key lessons can we apply to shape the governance and ethics guidelines for AI as we approach its pivotal moment in society? First question. Yes, we can, uh, we'll come to this point. 
uh, what are the concrete uh, lessons. I wouldn't go uh, uh, directly to the lessons, but I would go to the way of thinking that can help us. Like Ubuntu, we probably cannot find concrete suggestion how to deal with algorithms, but we can be inspired to put into AI guardrails the idea that AI is developed through interaction. The idea AI is developed on your and my data, that AI is developed on scientific research on many, many people, and that that sort of thinking is important to, uh, to bring in the forefront when we start discussing AI governance. Your second question is, in envisaging a future of AI governance framework, how can we strike a balance between fostering innovation, ensuring this possible AI develop, given the diverse interests of stakeholders from the tech companies to governance? Well, that's a $1 million question. I don't know the answer, but I know the way how we can uh, try to uh, get closer to the answer. First, we have to anchor it into the core values of humanity, ultimately all religious and philosophies respect three elements, protection of human life, protection for human dignity, and the right to people to realize their potentials. This is the first point. It's more or less shared across all cultural, religious, and other traditions. Second point, it's a journey. We don't know where we are going to end up, but we have to move with agile approach, with adjustment, and the third point, we have to make constant trade-offs. There are no ideal solutions. No, AI is not going to mark the end of humanity as we saw earlier enough. But it doesn't mean that we should not think about uh, realistic risks. Therefore, that striking the right trade-offs is crucial. Solution for AI are more analog than binary, either or, or, uh, or doing, uh, doing uh, similar thinking. We have the question from Eva Matur, freshman law student from Dubai. What are the challenges in governing AI? You will be hearing, Eva, uh, shortly about a few challenges. Now, you please continue posing your questions and getting back to the presentation. Who are the actors? There will be so far answered question why and what, but who are the actors dealing with artificial intelligence? Many actors, governments, businesses, technologies, international organizations, standardization bodies, which are very important, academics who make spelling mistakes, like, as I did here, media. I just mentioned a few actors, but ultimately, all of us are actors, including, of course, citizens, because AI is not just external tool like car or hammer or even computer. It is something which is going to influence our very intimate family and other um, uh, realities by providing advices, by providing comments and other things. Therefore, AI is entering into our cognitive and emotional spaces. Now, this is a question for, for all of us to consider. There will be discussion among these actors, one which is very problematic, and uh, I spend now almost three decades of my career, I don't know how useful I was, but I have been spending trying to reduce lost in translation. Be between people who make a very simple connection between dots A and B, very often coming from technical community, and framing things binary, as we saw, it's the end of humanity with AI, as we saw previously, and people who are more on policy or diplomatic side who realize that connection between two dots is not straight. There are fears, there are career interests, bosses, questions, dilemmas. And this is very important to keep in mind, to foster that in this agile approach, that constant trade-offs, to have a clear answers at any point, but to avoid that simplistic thinking that the line between A and B in AI is straight. We'll have big issues about discrepancy, big state delegation, small state delegation, many countries being quite lost to what's going on around. Hearing that AI will end up humanity, what to do? What to ask citizens? What to ask parliaments? 
maybe even if they're not advanced countries, but there is something happening. How can you be around the table to discuss what's going on? Those are few actors. I'm just summarizing. And where AI negotiations are happening? What are the places and spaces? Uh, on all levels of the this, I call it policy elevator, from local communities, which very often have specific cultural and ethical context to national, regional, and global. And this is how AI will work through these elevators, up the, to the global, but also down to the local. Local will have a growing relevance because if AI gives advice to you about what you should do with I don't know, your boyfriend or girlfriend or, or with a marriage, it's not an abstract issue that can be answered by somebody programming the AI in the Silicon Valley. It's a question of the cultural context in specific communities. Therefore, that is the reason why this policy elevator is extremely important. On the top level, we have UN Secretary General and Common Agenda. In the few weeks, there will be a meeting in New York, uh, I think on 20th of September, dedicated to AI governance. You know that there is a Tech Envoy's office and attempts to initiate this very complex discussion. Don't expect quick solutions, don't expect shortcuts, but follow carefully this, this debate, uh, which uh, is probably one of the most difficult debates in global governance, because it has technical aspects, geopolitical, geostrategic. There is a lot of confusion and that, that requires, uh, that we, that will be learning process ahead of us. You know, the part of it is a global digital compact, which will be negotiated over the next year and hopefully adopted during the summit of future next year. Uh, in the questions where I started with Geneva, and this is a Geneva framework, for those of you who are familiar, more than 50% of digital governance is, is happening more or less in the radius of three kilometers around the building from which I'm connecting now at the Geneva Internet Platform and Diplo. The last question in this presentation, not, not there is one more, but this is very important. How we deal with Internet AI governance? What are the approaches and mechanisms? Now, when you face the new thing, you usually look for an analogy. And uh, I'm sure I got a bit tired with the, with the Silicon Valley gurus discovering that there is an um, um, atomic agency of uh, IPCC, International Panel, Panel on Climate Change, which, by the way, has the headquarters just six floors above, above where I stand now. And, you know, you have the article, uh, it's like a climate change, it's like uh, nuclear weapons, it's like transboundary pollution, it's like outer space, it's like ILO, it's like a disaster recovery, like nuclear energy. In international relations and gender in logic, every analogy has some similarities. Uh, with climate change, yes, we need scientific input in order to deal with AI, but there are also huge differences. Therefore, what we are doing at Diplo now, we are mapping this, let's say, analogy and metaphor space uh, and see, okay, what is similarity with climate change? What is similarity with nuclear en energy or disaster recovery? Just to bring some sort of uh, uh, bearings, uh, because um, I started basically ignoring, uh, you have a new article in the foreign policy, in New York Times, somebody discovering that this is like transboundary pollution. If that person is usually well-known name in uh, uh, media, then that gets attention. But very often, very superficial coverage by just identifying similarities. So what we are trying to see, hey, let's see what are the similar similarities and what are the differences. But use of metaphors and analogies it will be more prevalent as we deal with something which is new and unknown. What is my advice for the people involved with the UN and diplomacy is always anchor it into UN Trinity. Security, human rights, development and economy. 
AI, and this is what history teaches us, is not that different. When you step back and you realize that it's about security, yes, cybercrime, cybersecurity, but it's about human rights, privacy, freedom of expression, women's rights, disabilities, and of course, development. And that's you, always this triangle is useful anchor to deal with, with, uh, with the hype. Uh, you have two approaches. You have uh, fixing uh, top-down uh, uh, AI uh, by uh, doing a few things, ensuring that data sets represent cultures, values worldwide, better codifying of oral culture, especially in Africa, and representing them in AI models, giving higher weight. You know, in AI, the key is what you uh, consider more important. You tell to the AI model, ChatGPT, hey, this document, UN Charter, is the most important, or the Bible, or the Quran, or the holy books, or from other religions. Therefore, there is a bit of a way to give a higher way to certain, certain documents. We have to encourage, here is our drawing, Sancho Panza, uh, bottom-up AI. I'm always arguing that knowledge is, like emotions, belongs to us. And we have to return AI to citizens and communities and address the risk of power of centralization. Realizing on a reliance on small, high-quality data sets, ownership of our data, ownership of our AI, what is AI? This is my knowledge, in this case, during this presentation, my knowledge about AI governance, or your knowledge from your family, lunch discussion on Sunday or other things. We don't need to pass that to centralized system. And in my view, it's a huge risk. In order not just to deliver a nice presentation and to talk about it, we at Diplo are doing, we are walking the talk. We are arguing that if you have a high quality data, let's say on diplomacy, on climate change, annotated and contextualized, you can have really high level AI. You don't need to have trillions of texts like uh, OpenAI is using. It's useful, but soon you will hit the limits of the large language models. We call it from small language models and cognitive proximity between us humans, among us and with machine. This is what we are basically doing it in Diplo, trying to show that you can develop bottom-up AI by having small language models and cognitive cognitive proximity. And I can, we can have an in-depth discussion and presentation on it. We have also to claim a right to be humanly imperfect. Uh, AI, we cannot win the battle with AI on optimization. We have right, right to be humanly imperfect, maybe will come one day, like, like right to be forgotten came to the, to the European Court of Justice and later on to, to GDPR, maybe will come to the UN. We have right to remain neutral, natural. We have right to disconnect. We have right to be anonymous. We, have, we should have right to be employed over machines. And uh, that will be, in my view, one discussion which will be growing of relevance in Geneva and places like Geneva. What defines us as humans and what is the niche that we should protect in this context? The last question is when time and timing, uh, doomsday clock through the years. There's a question there. We have approximately a few minutes, 90 seconds uh, till doomsday, mainly related to the and potential use of nuclear weapons in the context of the Ukraine war. Uh, but we have to act fast also on AI. We have to act fast, to move uh, fast, like this uh, rabbit, but also follow the logic of turtle, moving slow and understanding deeper historical context. Not an easy to achieve, but possible. And at Diplo, we we are approaching this through the humanism project where we are anchoring AI in the core of humanity or humanism and have then discussion on governance, 
diplomacy, technology, philosophy, linguistic, arts, religion, and other issues. We remain always questioning us being counterintuitive and uh, doing constant inquiry. What does it mean to be human? And what is our interaction with, uh, with machines? Here are a few points if you want to follow up with my tweet and email. But that would be all uh, from my side in this conclusion, how to make a bridge between historical thinking towards the future discussion of AI. As you can see from all of these points, most of the issues, like to be human imperfect, are deeper anchored in our philosophical and religious history. Maybe not answers, but guidelines for our thinking or inspiration could be found in the holy books, in the core philosophical uh, writings, in the oral Ubuntu tradition, and other sources of human wisdom developed in addressing basic issues, who we are, how we deal with our predicaments, including death, and how we interact with other humans, because we are, and this has to be kept in mind, we are because you are. Thank you for, for, uh, for since this session is sort of moderated by me, I will be now getting back to the questions and seeing if there are new questions asked in, uh, in, uh, uh, from the LinkedIn, Eva asked questions. I hope, Eva, that we answered the question. Hannah uh, Ama Nyarko, indeed, AI is around us and I will be mistaken for academia to ban students' use of ChatGPT. Rather, there should be instruction on its, its responsible use. Uh, Hannah, uh, we will share, and some colleagues can share in chat because it will take me too much time to time. Our experience uh, from a recent simulation exercise done by our colleagues, Sorina Teleanu, where she used AI in hybrid form by simulating negotiation of the Global Digital Compact with 25 students for 10 days, and using AI as a, some sort of assistant, which uh, basically creates a new perspective, ideas. You can check your thoughts. I use AI in that way as a, some sort of interlocutor in my discussion, instead of talking to myself, which won't look very, very nice, although I'm getting older, I have AI, I ask questions, and it helps me to increase inquiry and later on uh, see where AI got it wrong. Therefore, uh, the idea to ban AI is, is, um, is wrong on all levels. First, you cannot ban it easily. AI detection tools are so weak. OpenAI, basically, which created ChatGPT, gave up on their AI detection tool. Therefore, be very careful when you find the AI detection tool, they don't work. This is statement from OpenAI, but it's also my experience. Therefore, you uh, putting your head in the sand and arguing that nothing exists around it is very wrong. I think the problem is that ChatGPT, like all previous technologies, will force us to change. It puts mirror in front of us. And let's admit, our education is not always uh, exciting, inspiring, useful. Therefore, professors and students, starting with myself as I'm professor as well, we have to embrace this tool and see how we can ultimately deliver on our goal to engage students, to make them increase their uh, critical thinking and creativity. Therefore, there will be link coming on, on that. Uh, from Seppo Makakane, policy elevator aspect can also be observed in context of AI deployment, algorithm tools and satellite imageries in identifying economic vulnerabilities household during the COVID lockdown in Nigeria and Togo. Yes, uh, that's, that's uh, whenever... Um, Tsepo, Tsepo, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Whenever you have patterns to be discovered, AI is useful. 
whether it's economic vulnerabilities, you mentioned the example of COVID-19 lockdown, that's it. But patterns which are then impact to the human decisions and human analysis. Pareja, uh, when will the panic around AI and governance rule tone down and are we doing enough to understand and live in harmony with AI? Uh, Fareh, I don't know. There are now re- analyses, a wide range of explanation. One set of explanation argues that there are vested interests, that if you increase fear among people, it's easier to manipulate. That's, I would say, on the level of conspiracy theory. Uh, but it is justifiable concern because most of this fear mongering is coming from AI monopolies. And what they do, they say, stop developing AI, but they are developing AI nonstop. Elon Musk called for a pause in AI, but then he he made the huge purchase on NVIDIA processing cards. The same is with OpenAI and Microsoft, with Google. Therefore, there is something problematic on that. Therefore, I'm not very optimistic about it, especially media loves the panic and the fear. Therefore, I'm it toned down during the summer, but I expect another wave of uh, uh, fear mongering, and uh, that's that's bad. Mind you, there are risks, but the risk cannot be addressed and uh, addressed in the context of the fear mongering. You have to understand what are the risks, what are the precautionary measures and what we can do it. Okay, that's, I answered the Fareha questions. And I guess that's that's it. You got the link to the this Sorina's exercise. And I'm, uh, I'm back in the, in the, in the room. If you don't have any other question or comment, uh, we will be basically wrapping up the, the session. I guess uh, our team will send the recording, we'll uh, send the um, summary of discussion, and we'll send you a few links to this overall exercise on recycling ideas and invite you to be part of this uh, debate. Diplo will be providing very useful resources, especially in this balanced discussion on AI and society. And uh, we invite you to step back Think about you, your family, your organization, and see how you can contribute to this debate while following the core values of humanity. Protection of human life, protection of human dignity, and realization of human potentials in the context of community. Because, and I will conclude with this, I am who you are. And uh, that great saying from Ubuntu, I hope will resonate in digital discussions and AI discussion ahead of us. I'm looking forward to e-meeting you uh, and meeting you in person at the forthcoming events. Thank you and have, well, there was one more question. Let me see. Ubuntu uh-huh. from Paula is a dialogue partner seeks to bring uh, change makers across the world to speak on issues affecting them through and share ideas with the leaders such as the Nobel Prize, a Peace Prize laureates, former heads. Excellent. Paula, that's fantastic. We'll share this and let's invite and let's guide some of the AI discussion towards this Ubuntu platform. Thank you. Have a nice day and uh, keep in touch. Ciao. Bye.